I got into street art or graffiti art about 13 years ago. Um, I sort of always drew. I don't remember ever not drawing, painting as a little youngster. Um, when I was in primary school, my brother actually had a friend who drew my brother's name in graffiti for him one day and my brother stuck it up on his bedroom door and I just thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen so I actually stole it, took it to my room and I just every day after school would just sit there studying how he did these letters so stylized and cool looking and I'd try and write my own name in the same kind of style um, and from there I just started noticing all the sort of different graffiti lettering around the place and um, eventually just yeah had to try and try and spray myself and once I started just couldn't stop, it's kind of a snowball from there. Yeah, my parents are great. Um, I think because I kind of had that arty background beforehand and they sort of saw how serious I was about drawing and painting and everything, this just sort of became just another medium for me to try. For um, my birthday one year, my dad built me this really big, basically a wooden wall for me to just come home every Arvo and spray and just practice on. So yeah. They, they, were, they were sweet. So, how I got the name Smalls. Uh, my surname is actually Small. Um, and when I was in primary school, I was actually picked on and bullied all the time. Um, a, lot of, a lot of guys would, you know, pick on me and call me Smalls and Smallsy. And, and eventually I just decided to wear that as a bit of a nickname. I'd introduce myself as Smalls. And um, after that, people couldn't really bully, it with me, bully me with it anymore um, because they were just calling me what well, my nickname was. My mates called me Smalls. So it was my little way of kind of um, taking a bit of a weakness and wearing it as an armour so no one could hurt me with it anymore. And when I, uh, it came time to have a bit of an artist alter ego, it, it just fit. I mean, there's obviously a few different ways that people start. A lot of people do start out tagging the neighbour's fence. That's not what we're about here. But if anyone, you know, if you're keen on getting into it, go to Bunnings, go to the Green Shed, grab a bunch of scrap wood, an old door or something, some, some tins from Bunnings. Have a practice at home first, get a bit of can control, get your hand into it, get an idea for what you can kind of do with spray. And then if you want to pursue it further, once you know you've got those sort of techniques down, um, have a Google of where the legal walls are in Canberra, because there's heaps of them, we're really lucky here and um, anyone can go and, go and spray there. There's a couple little sort of unwritten rules that you know you might want to ask around and sort of learn first where you're allowed to spray kind of thing. But um, yeah, that's how I got started and that's, that's a good way, I reckon, to get into it. My favourite kind of art to produce. I don't really know how to answer that because I think it's important to just do such a range of art. And although I'm sort of known as a graffiti artist and that's what I've been most successful in, I love cracking out the pens or the oils or watercolour, just really trying a broad range of art mediums. There's not really a medium that I wouldn't give a go. And every time that I do a different medium, every time that I use brushes and oils, it helps my graffiti art. I learn different ways to paint things with different techniques and the structure and how you kind of break down an image to paint it. And that then transfers into that graffiti art. So everything helps, even if there's one sort of medium that you are most pas pas passionate about, uh, really having a go at other, other mediums is going to help that, that main one for you. Art at school was a little bit tricky for me, um, but that was mainly the school that I went to. The art program there wasn't very good. Um, when I moved schools, I actually started really uh, thriving in art quite a bit more and now that I look back on it I kind of wish I had taken more advantage of it because the kind of resources and equipment that you have while you're in school are so difficult to come by when you're out of school. If I wanted to now for example make a sculpture or something that's going to cost me heaps of money I don't really know where I'd do that but when you're in school you have this whole classroom, this whole um, studio where you can basically learn those skills. This program has been sick. This is probably one of the coolest gigs I've ever had. Just coming here and hanging out with a great bunch of young people and um, hopefully showing some you know, young up and coming artists a little bit of what I'm about and, and how they can kind of reach, reach their goals with art as well. I'm pretty sure you know, in a few years time I'll be looking up to some of these kids and the art that they're doing and they'll surpass me which would be cool to see. So 
also to any young aspiring artists out there. Um, I guess my first bit of advice and the thing that, that really sort of kicked me into you know, chasing it down was that it is possible. Um, it is a legitimate career path if you, if you want it to be a professional artist. You know, if, if your art is good enough and you put in the effort and time, you, you, know, you should have enough pride in yourself to, to kind of demand you know, what, what you're owed for that, for that craft. Um, really, it, it just comes down to how much effort you put into it. If you chase it, you'll catch it. But you have to really hustle, you have to put in the effort and you have to want it enough to be able to pursue that career path.